We could we could use this for clay, right? Hey class, Mr. G here. Welcome back. Today, we're going over another assignment, again, for our virtual students. Those of us who are teaching ceramics class, but we, but we don't have any clay or we're working at home. Now, while we're in this virtual environment, many of us don't have access to clay or the students don't have access to clay if we're in our classrooms. So I thought, what can we do that will also take care of? So I've got some masking tape. I saw a fun tutorial over using masking tape to create vases for ceramics class. And I was like, that would totally cover pinch pots. For this assignment, I used several pieces of tape that I laid out on my board. Now, it's not exactly your traditional pinch pot vessel vase item, but let's talk, let's dive into this. Now, for this project, you're going to need a couple materials. One, some masking tape. Two, a lid. Um, I used the camera end off of a... I used the lens cap off of one of my cameras and it works just the same. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna start off by taking small squares of the tape. And what I did is I laid out a grid across my tabletop surface. Reason you laid out that grid is so that you have a lot of pieces to work with all at once so that you're not just kind of sitting there and tear a piece, build a piece, tear a piece, build a piece. I like to work in a nice assembly line. So I'll tear several of these pieces out, lay them on my table, start building, start going around in these. So for a pinch pot, let's go over what that is in clay. You're taking the clay and you're pinching it between your fingers to create a expanded vase bowl shape out of the clay. To get the same skill set, we're going to use tape and we're going to make a pinch of clay out of just a little square piece of tape. So as we lay this into our as we're laying it into our lid here, we're gonna take those several pieces and we're just gonna start adding them around. Now, as it starts to expand out, either adding them onto the interior or the exterior of our shape that we're starting to build, we're creating a new vessel, we're creating a new shape. So as I was building up my piece, I started taking different pieces apart and adding them together to create different channels, different chains, connecting those pieces together. And as you're adding it up, it's also gonna to start to flare out and change the shape overall to your, or to your pinch pot vase now this is traditional what you would normally have when you're making a pinch pot as the clay is stretched and pulled apart and expanded out the sides of the pinch pot are going to change if you're not adding the same amount of pressure on one side of the piece to the other side of the piece you are going to have an off your piece is going to start to become off balance, kind of disconjoined. And the reason is because you're changing up the structure of the weight. Now, as we're spreading our pieces around, we're adding more tape, adding more clay to the outside edge. We're going to start to get a, a fanned out version and it's going to start to get smoother, uh, thinner and thinner as we're stretching it out because we're using a finite amount of clay and we're going to push it. To, uh, we're going to push it out to its furthest limits. Now with the tape, you're going to have the same kind of issues because as it starts to flare out, these pieces are now becoming more structurally bound by how much tape you put at the base. Did you add a lot of pieces down there to have a stronger base than you did at the top and vice versa? If you have more thicker pieces at the top where you're overlapping several pieces all at once and you have these thicker elements at the top, that's going to change the weight distribution from the top to the bottom now for me i thought let's do like a little bit of a honeycomb thing going on on the interior of that now reason i did the honeycomb is really for aesthetic but it also works really well for the building purposes because now i'm having sections of the vase being pulled across from the other opposite side of it which is going to help out bait help stretch out the weight distribution better in my piece now, once you make one of these pieces, what are you gonna do to the outside? How are we gonna finish it up to decorate it? Now, luckily I had some pieces left behind from when I did a uh, magazine collage project. Check out that video. Make sure you check out that video up there. Once I've gotten these strips, the outside of this vase is tacky because you got a bunch of tape there. So quickly to add design elements to it, I did like a zebra pattern. Uh, I was going to do like a herringbone kind of thing on one side where it's just, you know, having them back and forth, but that didn't work out the way I was planning on it. But the magazine pieces worked out really well too. So you can add another element of how are you going to extra, how are you going to decorate the exterior of your piece uh, with straight lines, with vertical lines, different colors, different at, different textures. How are you going to dress these things up? But I would cover the outside of the piece because you have that tacky tape and it's just going to stick to everything. Now to finally, and finally here, just to finish it off, I had a piece of cardboard, just glued it to the bottom really well. Add a couple strips of, of uh, 
paper to the bottom just to further adhere it, adhere it to the bottom. I'll probably cut these extra pieces off just to give it a nice little finish or stack some more pieces up so I got a nice little stand for it. But this is a fun little alternative project for those that are virtual and don't have access to clay and you need some fun clay activities, some 3D modeling. Awesome class, so I hope that you guys got some wonderful tips out of today's lesson. Let's go ahead and wrap up class as we usually do. Don't forget to like, subscribe, share on all the various platforms, get the message out there to as many teachers and students as we possibly can. Try and spread that message out to all of us. As always, if you guys have a question, comment, or concern, raise your hands down in the comments below. Happy to answer those questions from my students. As always, I'll see you guys next class. Until then, later guys.